This is Speaking of Events, the podcast for event industry leaders. We bring together innovators, strategic rock stars, and visionary creatives to talk all about events, industry trends, and anything in between. And speaking of events, here is your host, Carrie Garbus. Do you know what a golden birthday is? I'm going to tell you. Your golden birthday, because everybody has one, is when the date of your birth coincides with your age. For example, my birthday is April 26th, best day ever. So my golden birthday was when I turned 26. Now, I wasn't really familiar with this concept until I was about to turn 26 and I was on tour. I happened to be in Michigan that day and I was on the national tour singing in the rain. And my cast was awesome. And people knew about the significance of the golden birthday that when you're, when you're turning 26 on the 26th, that it must, must be celebrated in high fashion. And boy, was mine celebrated in high fashion. I got gifts every hour. They somehow worked it out with the 26 cast members that every hour somebody would give me a gift, which was really, really cool. And I got to do a show. So I had friends, I got to perform. And then after the show, we went out to a Friday's TJI Fridays. I'm not sure those even exist anymore. So this is like, <laughs> can guess when this might've been. And so I got friends performing a nacho. So you really can't ask for, in my opinion, ask for much more. So today's guest and I happen to have a conversation about the golden birthday, the last time we chatted, which inspired me to share my golden birthday and other golden fabulous moments of life and really isn't that what it's all about when we shine the gold light on great moments in our life and a lot of that happens at events and so we're going to talk about that and so much more I think you're going to find this conversation to be as much fun as my golden birthday and interesting and delightful because our guest is that and I'm so pleased to welcome to speaking of events Katie O'Brien she is the director of implementation and training which is a very different title than we typically have from Sketch Alert welcome Katie O'Brien thank you I love that you had a great golden birthday I did have a great golden birthday okay. and, <laughs> and we'll talk more about golden birthdays and other golden moments. So why is, why is the director of implementation and training talking to me on speaking of events? Riddle me that Ooh. Katie O'Brien. Well, I have experience in medical events. So I put on medical conferences, um, for a living, um, and, or, well, now I'm in health tech. So, um, but anyways, so for 20 years, I've put on medical conferences. And then also the other part of my job was to do all of the training and corporate events for um, my organization. And so that's why I'm here. And I'm that's why you're that. here. You've got a lot to tell us. I am excited. <laughs> and training is very much as you know, we discussed, my company su supports a ton of events. We all support support a ton of training. And to me, it makes sense. Right. Training is an event. And so with your vast experience in training and development and medical conferences, what do you, Katie O'Brien, want to share with the world? What, what golden joy do you have to share with us? <laughs> the golden joy. I think, you know, I think the thing for me is that event planning is a profession and there's a reason that we go through training to do our job. And it's not something that you just pick up on a whim. There are people that are just special and just can do it, you know, without a lot of training, but then there's other people that go through sense of training to be the professional that we are. And so, um, I think that's important. Uh, I've, I've, witnessed a couple of times where companies have strayed from their strength and added events into it. For like example, a marketing company it naturally kind of aligns with events and they just take it on without hiring that event professional. And it almost takes away from their strength and, and 
their core competence of what they were what they were good at and it almost dilutes almost dilutes their their business and what they provide um, because they don't have the strength in event planning so that's something that I think is a golden nugget to take away um, that I wish more people would understand and and embrace um, the event profession. Right. Let the professional lead and shine where you're meant to shine. Is that something that I don't want to not yeah, sum it up sure. correctly? I think, I mean, yes, and. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> uh, I think that, um, I think that, you know, for example, I am not a speaker. I'm not going to go on a stage and do speaking. I would hire a speaker to do that, right? I just, um, I use this a lot with my husband where he's really good at mechanics. And um, so sometimes we don't go see a mechanic when our car is acting up and other times we do, right? Know where your, know where your limitations are and then hire that vendor, or hire the person to lean in. Um, and I think that's something with event professionals that we do really well is that we have this catalog of, of professionals that help us put an event on together. And, um, and we don't do it alone. Absolutely. That's, that's good leadership. Anytime, <laughs> anytime anybody so as, at, as an entrepreneur, people are like, what's, what's your key to success? And I'm like, well, there's many. And one of them <laughs> is that I surround myself with people smarter than me. Because sure. I've I've got my I've got my stuff that I'm good at and it's not mechanics at all. And then there's other people that I will bring in to support and and get stuff done that I simply can't I, we cannot we can't do it all. Yeah, and sure. so we're gonna let the event professionals event and the mechanics mechanic. <laughs> And then every yeah. and then everybody else do their do your thing. Everybody do else do your thing, right? Absolutely. There's do your thing. A place to hire an event professional for sure. Yes. So, what is your thing at Scheduler? What is your thing? You walk down the hall, the proverbial hall, because that's a, yep. a lot of things are virtual, right? So they're like, "Hey, it's Kitty O'Brien. She." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, sorry. Um, she, I don't, she, what is my thing? I think I am the supporter. I think I'm the person that's behind the scenes making it all run. Right. Um, yes, and that's are. where I like, that's where I like to be. Um, I really like to be behind. Um, like my favorite place is outside of the event room. So making sure all of the things, like I like to be the person that's running and doing the things. Um, and so I'm usually outside of the event room or at Scheduler, I'm our, our chief executive officer and our CEO are our front people. And I like to be behind giving them everything that they need in order to be successful, um, in order for us to build. And so that's what I, that's what I love. Um, that's, that's amazing. I, uh, that is who you are. Events, right? It's so yes. that, because the events, an event professional, in my opinion, is usually never in the front. They're always you know, you can sometimes find them, but they're usually making sure the next thing is happening. And so um, uh, that's what I love is just putting all those pieces together and making sure the next thing is happening. Yes. And you've, you've done, you've, you've done a lot. You're very seasoned in this, certainly. Yeah. So <laughs> you're, you're not old, not old, not old. <laughs> also like my age so not old and <laughs> we're gonna go with that <laughs> temporary a seasoned contemporary if you will and so I know you've 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 observed some disasters which you know I love to talk about I love to talk about speaker disasters and event disasters yeah. which you know because I think you're my very first guest who has listened to every other episode of speaking of events at least I'm one has, behind now oh you're one, one behind. behind okay well, by the time this airs, you'll be, you'll, you'll be, you'll, you'll be up to date. So thank you. So, yes. you know, I love to talk about disasters. So what do you got for me? Make it good. Oh my gosh. Okay. So my first is an event disaster. Um, and it's such a silly one. So this was back. So I was 
so it is back in 2001. So way back before video conferencing and before all of this stuff was a really big deal, right? And so I was contacted by a um, an imaging company. They wanted to put on an event and they wanted to showcase their imaging to our doctors. And so great, put on Cal um, California put this event on. And one of the things that they wanted to do was a live stream into an operating room. So this is normal. I know it sounds abnormal, but I promise you it's normal. Um, it's normal for people to talk during surgery. So anyway, so we were live feeding into an operating room and he was talking about the device and talking about the procedure. It was a training um, per portion of the event. So he's talking about how he's using this device and, and then all of a sudden the person starts to code and no. start to go by and I'm sitting there and I am not a medical professional and I am sitting there and no one is responding. Like no one's like freaking out in this audience. Nothing's happening except I'm freaking out. And I'm like, do I cut it? Do what do I do? Do I just stop it? And so I'm like looking around and no one's, and everyone's just calm. There's nothing going on. And the doctor on the OR is calm. And finally, I'm just like, let's cut the feed. So we cut the feed and our, our course director got up and he's like, well, some things happen, don't they? And then they just kept going. And I was like, okay, that just happened. And it was like a moment for me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, uh, okay. And then we got news that the person was fine and everything was fine, but still that's a, big deal in a medical event for me at least so that was kind of interesting a little bit of a disaster um, uh, we recover. with a happy ending a disaster with a happy with ending. A happy ending and I wow I I would have gone into full I'm not good with medical stuff and I would have gone into full panic mode and probably just like maybe started to hum the theme song from ER or something like anything to distract yeah. from what was possibly happening. Yeah, it was, um, for me, it was uncomfortable, but I was in a room full of doctors and they weren't uncomfortable. So I learned, um, I learned the nerves of steel that day, right? Where I <laughs> yes. Was, okay. Here we are. And that's one thing in the med medical profession, when you're doing conferences, um, it is a place where you cannot be queasy because you walk in on the weirdest thing. <laughs> yes. Eyeballs bulging out like a, a video of someone doing ocular um, surgery and you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. So um, you never know what you're going to get when you walk into a presentation on at a medical conference. Never. Never wow. know. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm warned. I am warned. Ab warned. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do uh, opening and closing stuff. Don't do right. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I know you have more than one. That was your event disaster. Maybe you speak. So this is just a this is just a silly one. So it's not like okay. um, it's not big, but um, we had I was we were doing an event in Hawaii, which I know will get you there. It's your one thank state you. you haven't been to. Yes, thank you, Katie, for remembering that. Yes. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I didn't bring you along with me, but we were in Hawaii. And we <laughs> next, were flying, time. next time. <laughs> and we were flying a um, person from France and he had a family obligation. So he had to fly from France straight to the conference and he landed and had two hours before he was going to speak. And that time change is just a beauty, right? And you know this as a speaker, right? You know that that like sometimes life happens and you just you hit the ground running you've got a barrel and, through my friend yep Ooh. <laughs> right so that's just I mean I just anyway so we he checked in we got him all settled and he's like I'm going to go to my room drop my stuff off I'll be back and I'll be back 20 minutes before the start of my show or my uh -huh. presentation and I was like great 20 minutes started nothing he wasn't there 15 minutes and I'm like oh no and so at 15 minutes, I sent um, one of my employees and I was like, go knock. We, he's on our master list. So we knew where he was staying. I'm like, go knock on his door, pound on his door, see if he's there. We're calling the hotel. We're calling everywhere, like sending people to pools. Like, where could this man be? And um, 
my employee, Michelle, who is delightful, she um, was pounding on his door, yelling his name. And he opened the door and he's like, I'm late, aren't I? And they came running and we were at the Hawaiian village, which is huge. It's a big resort. So he comes running like sweat tie over his shoulder, just comes running and we made it. We made, he made it. He, we were five minutes late. We apologize for the delay, but he made it and it was a great presentation, but oh, that man, that poor man was so exhausted. So he got off the stage and I'm pretty sure he just went and passed out afterwards. So. Wow. That is nuts. So I just, while you were telling that story, I was looking up what the time difference is between yeah. France and Hawaii and a quick Google search told me it's 12 hours. Yeah, so that's, amazing. yeah, I mean, that's not 24, but you know, like from a sleeping to a, you know, from when you're supposed to be awake and when you're supposed to be asleep, right. It's yeah. the opposite. <laughs> right. And that body clock is strong, right? That is, that'll fight you. And I remember somebody sharing this a couple of years ago with me that it, it takes, your body can only adjust one hour a day. So for him to truly get on Hawaii time, that would have taken 12 days. That yeah, a, a budget court, did not support that. Yeah, no, 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 nobody's budget supports that, except mine will when I finally get to go to Hawaii. We're going to go, so we'll see. we're going to make it happen. Right. And that, you know, that is my, that's my wish get to Hawaii. It's the only state I haven't been to, as you remember, and I'm just going to keep saying, hoping somebody will invite us. Yeah, to let's just keep do... plugging this Hawaii. Does anyone right. need a speaker for Hawaii? <laughs> right. I, I can either speak at your event. I can, we can do speaker coaching at your, we'd love to support any event or as I think L and D. Yes. Or yes, event. we could do some training in Hawaii yeah. or yeah. I'll sweep the floor. Seriously. I don't care. And left stand. That's a, <laughs> that is my wish for the event industry. That my wish is that I get to go to Hawaii. What is your wish for the event industry? If you could change anything about events, what would it be? A new system for name tags. I hate name tags. I hate them so much. I like I have spent time thinking of other ways to make a name tag. I mean, I haven't come up with one clearly because I would be a billionaire. Um, but um, I hate name tags. They, oh yes, thank you. Thank you for putting one on. I'm, I'm I, putting a badge on. If you're, if you're not watching the video, I put a badge on, which by the way, it's a, it's an old, it's from a Tableau conference that we, that we supported as speaker coaches. And the, so my name is covered up and it's currently my do not disturb for my office. So it says, do not enter Tableau conference, do not enter. And then what you can't see in the, the let, little letters in black, it says, I still love you, but it's, Aww. it's a note to my child, get out. I was going to say that's a mom note if I've ever seen one. <laughs> right. I know totally. So I, you want a new, okay. Why, why, what's wrong with this? I'm wearing the badge. I'm going to tell you my issues. What are your issues? They're, they're fine if you like wearing name tags. I mean, I get they serve a purpose. They're important. I'm not knocking the importance of a name tag. I mean, when you see someone coming at you and you're like, shoot, I know you don't know their name. I know their name. I know their name. And you don't know their name. You look that name tag and you know, right? It's just that simple. Um, I mean, you could also use common courtesy and just reintroduce yourself. But we'll just give everyone an out with a name tag. But there is just silly stuff. People enter in their names wrong. How do you enter your name in wrong? I don't know. People enter their names in without capital letters. So then you have to do a lot of data cleaning on that to make the name tag look professional. People enter their real name. Like, let's say their real name is Catherine, but they go by Sally. And we're supposed to know that. <laughs> and then we're changing name tags. Then you're alphabetizing them and then one name tag gets stuck to the other. I mean, I could just go on and on, you know, and I laugh because my dear friend, Karen, who runs Avenue 22 events that I work with, um, she sent me a text and it was like at two o'clock in the morning. She was like, you'll never guess what I'm doing. And then it was just a picture of name tags. And I was like, exactly. Name tags. Of course. They're the bane of your existence. So that's my yes. okay. name tag issue. So with my issue with the name badges is that how low they sit. So this one yeah. is like kind of navel level. A lot of times they are 
lady. Yeah. <laughs> Oftentimes looking at my, lady, my level, my lady level, if you will. Yeah. I don't yeah. always love that. And then you can, of course, not it, but then you're awkwardly walking around with like a giant and it's like choker necklace. Level. Choker level. That's right. <laughs> Like, so, and then if you don't do the badge, then you do the tag, right? And then you yes. either are we magneting, are we like the stickers versus the oh, pins? Right. And I just there has to be a there has to be a better way. All right, Katie. So let's workshop it. What do you think? Is it like a cuff bracelet? Could we cuff bracelet? I mean, that might be genius, like a big That's thick, awesome. right? And it says carry oh. and like. Mm -hmm. And then, I and like then if, that. you know, cause some people don't like to shake hands much anymore. You could just like put it, you know, do like a, uh, Ooh, like a fist bump, like, yeah, like a fist bump or, elbows. um, an like elbow. an elbow right in front of your fit. Right. Hey, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm just open to workshopping this. Honestly, I'm just like down with hats. Like I'll just give everyone hats. If I, don't <laughs> I like hats, hair bands. Ooh. I don't, you don't need My hair to wear, right? Hair band. I, I, you know, I, I think bald ones could just put it around like a scarf right. band maybe. Like a yeah. scarf. How about scarves? And then that could be a hairband. That could be a, a kerchief with a neck, <laughs> a tie. Okay. I oh. think, all right. We've got so a brief lightning on us. So yeah. Oh. yeah. We, okay. Oh yes, exactly. Very pink ladies. Okay. So we've got a lot of good ideas. We are open. <laughs> Katie and I want to hear your name, badge, replacement. Please ideas necklaces well, just, like you just walked around with your phone and just said your name on it oh or i think that might get annoying people could scan it and then you could always just like i don't know i can't I, that's too logistical like i don't know i, I haven't yes. i don't know it yet i don't want people in their phone for me i don't want their faces in their phones well i mean this is i'm all about communication so i want right that makes sense i want I contact. I'm thinking some sort of chip. And so it just automatically, you see me, it goes into your brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I no more yeah. like telepathic. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> so that you see that's me, you're like, Carrie, funny. that's a hard pass for me, but let's do it. Okay. Okay. I'm getting into a twilight zone. I get it. Okay. Great. All right. Solve that problem. <laughs> Moving on. All right. <laughs> Katie, you are in Tacoma, you're outside of Tacoma, Washington, or are you in? You're right, Tacoma. In, in Tacoma, Tacoma, proper. Okay. Now, interestingly, I talked to a lot of people and they're like, well, I lived in this country and I did this and this and this. You, my friend, have lived within a 23 mile radius your entire life. My entire life. I have. So I am not going to ask you, how did you get here? I'm going to ask how did you stay here? Tell me. I am one of seven. So I have, you know, six siblings. I have a huge family, huge, 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 huge family. Um, so just outside of my siblings, my parents have siblings and um, I, there's not a reason for me to leave, quite frankly. Like I love my family and my support system is huge. I have a daughter, um, Bridget, who is amazing and she can go to any family member at any time if I want you know a night off or I have a work event and she can be loved just as much over there um and so uh, there's not really a reason to leave so it was really easy to stay um and yeah and so I even my university is like walking distance from my mom's house so I mean I don't know and all your siblings stayed in the same area? For the most part. My, um, one of my older brothers lives in Vancouver, Washington. So, you know, not just so far, not like an hour and a half away. And then my older sister, Jolene lives in, um, I think she's in Walla Walla now she's over on the East side of Washington, but we're in Washington state. So all right. we can get to each other very easily. <laughs> Yes. And then the yes. rest of my siblings are all here. Yeah. They're all, I mean, less than a 10 minute drive away from me. So would you share a little bit about your backstory of, you know, what did you study? What did, how, how did you get to where you are today in medical events? I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So I studied, um, I studied business with an international focus and um, also um, a biology minor. 
um, because, you know, why not? Um, I love math. I love science. And so that always interested me. I thought early on in life, I wanted to be a pediatric cardiologist and, um, which is very specific, but I learned early in, um, college that that just wasn't my thing. I wanted to be more with people. I wanted to be, not that doctors aren't, but I wanted to be more in the business side of things, specifically um, more in teaching and training and leadership. That's really where I love to be. So we did that. So my first year I was a headhunter. And then after that, which was the best career, if you are a manager, you should be a headhunter for like six months of your career just to understand that it is okay to leave a job and it is okay to it is, it is okay for your employees to leave a job. So anyways, that's my headhunter plug because it's amazing. That is some good I, advice, actually. It, that is really good advice. And for me, when employees leave, it's not a loyalty jab, right? Right, um, right. So that's, that's the thing I struggle with in the business world is when employees leave, it's almost like the organization feels wronged. And I don't get that at all um, because it's an opportunity for the person to grow and thrive. And anyway, so Headhunter, like that being my first job influenced me so much in how I navigated through my jobs. Um, and so I truly have only had three organizations I've worked for. I've worked for a medical research company um, that did phase one pharmacokinetic research, which means how... How, how a drug, a pharmaceutical filters and metabolizes through your body. Thank and, you for uh, defining that because I did. Could you tell by my face that I was yeah, like, oh, I was like, I okay. Got you. Got yeah, you. Thank, thank um, you. <laughs> and, and so, um, so during that time, so I was there for 10 years. And um, so during that time, we started doing trade shows and I fell in love with trade shows. And I was on the traveling trade show team where I got to go stand in front of people and bring them in and tell them about our, you know, our phase one unit and how many beds and all that. And then I started looking around and I'm like, I want to do this. I want to plan these events. And um, so then I just started like saying that out loud to my boss, um, Colleen Hoke at the time. Um, and I just kept saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. And so we had an opportunity to um, plan an event. And she was like, do it, try it. And this comes back to, there's a reason, there's a profession. <laughs> and I wasn't there. I wasn't ready. Um, I mean, you know, I faked my way through it. But when I look back, it's it's not cringy, but there's like, oh, I was very green. And yeah. there are so many things I could have done better. But um, so I, I put that event on and fell in love with it. So then I started a wedding a company, a celebration of life company, because I just loved events. So I started that and I did that for a while while I was still working. Um, I had a grown up job in my, you know, my love job. And then I switched over um, to the Geneva Foundation where we had a federal grants arm. So the Geneva Foundation does medical, military medical research. And they had a conferencing arm and it was in, when I started, it was just really small. And I, um, so I started as the HR business professional. Um, so I could do the training piece and then, um, brought conferencing underneath me. And that's where I started doing, um, national liver conference, the San Antonio ophthalmology course, uh, Pacific Institute of nursing, so all of those big conferences and got to put on really cool conferences. Um, and now I work with pharmaceutical companies to do their site visits and their kickoffs and um, that. And I also still work with San Antonio Ophthalmology Conference. So there you go. Wow. That's my course. And through that, I just kept changing jobs. <laughs> like Because yep. you knew that was work. okay. Yeah, and do you, and now you're loving your, you love your grown-up job. Now my grown-up job is great. I'm in health tech now, which is completely different than medical research. Super fast, super fun. And now I'm in implementation and training. Um, and what I do is I go into medical offices for the most part, and I teach them about the product. I learn about their processes, and then I figure out how the two go together. So how does the product and the process go together? 
And then I work with people on their training plans and refreshers and all that stuff, which I love. I love going into an organization and just seeing the culture, seeing how it works, like sitting back and kind of watching and then like really diving in and being like, okay, let's see how we can make this happen. So that's nice. So yeah, at scheduler, that's the cool job. It's a really cool job. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing that with us. That is awesome. Are you ready, Katie O'Brien, to switch gears and go into our lightning express round? Let's do it. Okay. Awesome. 45 seconds on the clock. And I'm going to ask you seven questions. Here we go. What is your favorite moment in the event process? The day of. Absolutely everything about the day of. Boom. Who do you, who do you consider your mentor? My family speaks the most truth into my life. So them, all of them. And then, um, I have a few, um, Mrs. Van Tramp, uh, Jane Taylor, um, Pat Busick, Carrie Helly, Destiny Olson, and Laurel Culkin. And my husband, Brendan, super big mentor. Love it. Love it. Lovely parlay into my next question, which is please name all your siblings in birth order. Jeremy, Jolene, Jason, Katie, Carrie, Destiny, Kayleen. (laughs) That is very close to my siblings. That's kind of free. Okay. What do you do? Because we got the J and K's too. Okay. What do you do every day to stay healthy and sane? I snug my daughter on the couch right before bed. Um, That's like, that's my grounding force. Um, and I have to talk with some, I have to talk with one of my friends, like I have to connect. So not about work, but I have to connect on a personal level with at least one of my close people. Awesome. And if you weren't talking out, but I don't, (laughs) right. That's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to pretend here. Don't have to pretend. (laughs) If you weren't talking to me right now, what would you be doing? I would be building social media for scheduler right now. Ooh. That's what I'm going to do after this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Katie, when is your golden birthday? Or I should say maybe when was May 7th. Oh yeah. Mine was May 7th, but our dot, my daughter Bridget's birthday is November 12th. So we will be going to Tokyo on her golden birthday, birthday, which is what started the whole, by the way, golden birthday. That's what we talked about on our on our prep call. Oh, you're also a Taurus, which is what I am. So we're very close in birthdays. Why we love each other. Yes, that's right. It was a love fest from the moment we met. Exactly. Okay, final question is, what is the best way to take care of an event professional? Oh my gosh, use your manners. There you go. Use your manners. Say please. Boom. Like just, I love it. There you go. It's just Use that it. simple. Yeah. It's just really that simple. I love it. So lonely. That's kind of oh, a human statement for all. Like, yes. Please and thank yes. you. <laughs> so. You have dropped some solid advice on this <laughs> podcast. We got some massive golden nuggets and golden birthday tips on this. That's right. Uh, on, so thank Everyone you. Everyone should celebrate a golden birthday, right? Yes, absolutely. Even if you're under 31, you should can, can go back and celebrate Ooh, it sure. again, right? If, Ooh, even if you sure. passed it, it's fine. It's fine. Just make it up. Make it a reason for golden. That's right. Just make it golden just for fun. It's my golden day. For fun. Yeah. Where, Katie, where can people find you if they want to connect with you? LinkedIn is probably the best place to find me. Um, it's probably the easiest and where I'll respond the fastest. So That's right. um, I think we'll drop a link down below, right? For- we will drop a link down below in some show notes. Absolutely. Yes. You have certainly dropped a lot of good things. And I hope people picked up all this great stuff and some wonderful things to think about. We put a lot of wonderful ideas out into the universe. Badge ideas. Get me to Hawaii anything and we'll I'll take it thank you that's how we should end this like Katie what do you want to tell people get Carrie to Hawaii yes oh oh we will give me 20 seconds and we will (laughs) after I say thank you thank you so much for being my guest on today's episode of speaking of events Katie O'Brien thank you thank you thank you 
I welcome. will do this all the time with you. Oh, yeah. Delightful. Oh, oh yay. Yeah. And thank you to our audience and our listeners. What a gift was today. It was fantastic. Remember, if you like events, if you love events, even if you loathe events, and that's just me and medical events, tell someone about this podcast. Give us five stars. I just mean like the gross thing. The, you said eyeballs. It got a little gross for me. Dude, it's, fine. It. it's fine. It's fine. And thank you. Thank you again for joining us your unique ideas perspective really cool journey getting here thank you so much and remember audience my friends whatever you speak about remember to be speaking of events and katie o'brien what do you want to leave the audience with get, get carrie to hawaii Woo! get me to Woo! hawaii maybe we could play some like play out luau music any tom any luau music and they're all right yeah, I should. Yeah, I don't know because I've never been to Hawaii. So how would I know anything about hula? Except from Lilo well, and Stitch. All right. Go to, the Poly- <laughs> go to the Polynesian Center and you can learn yes. to, or to hula. Uh, yes, you are absolutely right. Thank you, Katie O'Brien. Thank you, Thank you everybody. <laughs> Speaking of Events is sponsored by Ovation, the gold standard for professional presence and speaker development training, helping everyone get prepared, get confident, and get ovation.